Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ike Ogiamian with Prometheus Engineering, and I would like to welcome you to another session of Prometheus University. And this is the first part in a nine part series on bending stress analysis and design. And in this first part, we'll be introducing bending stress in the elastic range. So, some of the things we'll be talking about are what is bending? What kind of stresses does it induce on the member? What is the elastic range? And what are the relationships between stress and deformation in that range? And what are the mathematical formulations that we use to show the relationships between bending and the stresses? And what are some of the insights that we can gain as we develop some of these mathematical formulations? So we can start this whole process by asking ourselves, what is bending? Now, one could answer that question in the following way. If we take a structural element with length associated with it, like a beam for example, and we applied a force P perpendicular to the member, we will deform the member in the following way. In essence, under the influence of the load, it goes from the blue shape to the red deformed, bent, smiley face kind of shape. And in essence, what we have done is we have applied the torque to it, haven't we? We've applied a torque, a uh, rotational force, a moment represented here by M to an axis perpendicular to its axis of length. Now, the question that follows is, what kind of stresses are induced on the red member as a result of this kind of deformation? Now, a good way to think about stresses is to think about strain and to think about deformation because stresses and deformation have a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, let's segue here tangentially for a second into a discussion about how we talk about stresses and deformations in engineering. If we look at this plot here on the vertical axis, we have sigma, which is stress, our symbol for stress. And stress is force per unit area. That's force divided by area in units of PSI, pounds per square inch, or pascals, newtons per square meter. And on the horizontal axis, we have strain, which is the change in length divided by the original length. Therefore, it's the deformation divided by the original shape. And it's a unitless way of describing the deformation of a body. Now, the green curve here represents a typical relationship or a typical curve between stress and strain. And the portion here highlighted in red is the elastic range. Now, the elastic range is the range wherein there is a linear relationship between stress and strain. There's a linear reversible relationship between stress and strain. Now, let's bear that in mind. We're going to put that off to the side and we're going to continue on our thought about what kind of deformation <clears throat> the red beam undergoes and then relate that to what kind of stresses it must be experiencing. So if we take the blue beam and then we think about its transition from the blue beam into the red deformed shape, we can see that in essence the red shape has a top portion that is squeezed. That top arc, the top cord, is shorter than the bottom cord. The bottom cord has been elongated and this corresponds with compression on the top and tension on the bottom. In other words, we have compressive strains, therefore compressive stresses on the top and tensile strains and therefore tensile stresses on the bottom. Now, if we investigate this further by taking a cross section of the member, let's say it's a rectangular member and with breadth and depth associated with it represented here by B and D respectively. And we show here the moment applied to it M, which is the torque the rotational force, and we show a green line which represents the neutral axis. Now the neutral axis is that portion or that line in the member where there is no strain, there is no deformation and therefore there is no stress. Let's think about that for a second. So we draw a strain diagram here which shows E less than or equal to EY which is basically saying that we are within the elastic range. All our strains are less than the yield strain. We see here the top 
part is the compressive strains, the maximum compression on top, the maximum tension in the bottom, and there's a linear change from tension to compression, and at some point, there is zero strain. So if we think of compression as negative and tension as positive strain, in the transition from tension to compression, there has to be, it has to cross zero. Now, that fact is experimentally verifiable, that within the elastic range, there is a linear transition from tension to compression. That's experimentally verifiable. Another experimentally verifiable fact is that within the elastic range, there is a linear relationship between stress and strain. Hence, the stress diagram essentially takes the same shape as the strain diagram here. Now, for a rectangular member, the neutral axis is located at d over 2, half of its depth. Now, essentially what we're saying here is that we bent the member, there's compression on the top and there's tension in the bottom, and this bending is playing itself out essentially as a compression and tension couple. And if we know the compression and the tension couple, and we can express it uh, uh, along with the lever arm between the tension and the compression, we can essentially express the moment that the cross-section is experiencing. So, what is the distance between the compression and the tension force? So, we notice that the stress distributions for tension and compression are triangular. So, the location of the resultant compression is d over 2 times 2 over 3. It's 2 thirds of the height of the stress distribution, in essence. And 2 thirds of d over 2 is equal to d over 3. The same thing applies to the bottom portion. It's 2 thirds of d over 2 as well. And that gives us d over 3. Now, d over 3 plus d over 3 gives us 2d over 3. So in essence, the lever arm that we have is 2d over 3. Now that we have the lever arm, let's define the compression and the tension. And basically the compression or the tension which are equal to which are equal to each other because of static equilibrium will be equal to the area of the triangle that represents the stress distribution multiplied by the width. So the tension is equal to the compression which is equal to half times the base which is d over 2 times the height which is sigma times the width of the beam which is b. So that's pretty much we're resolving the stresses in the triangle by taking the area of the triangle. And that turns out to be sigma BD over 4. So now we have the tension and the compression couple and the distance between them. And we can express that as the moment that the cross section is experiencing. So we can say the moment is equal to the tension of the compression sigma BD over 4 times the level arm 2D over 3, which gives us sigma BD squared over 6. Now, this number here, BD squared over 6, is called the section modulus. And it is a cross-sectional property, just like area is a cross-sectional property. Now, this particular cross-sectional property, section modulus, describes the distribution of bending stresses in the elastic range. Again, section modulus BD square over 6 is a cross-sectional property for a rectangle in this case, and it describes the distribution of bending stresses within the elastic range. So if you have any bending applied to a member, if you have the section modulus of the member, you can develop what the maximum stresses are on that member. And that's a very useful, useful mathematical object indeed. So we can write our equation that sigma less than or equal to sigma y. In essence, stress within the elastic range is equal to the applied moment, the applied torque, divided by the section modulus of the cross section in question. Now, in our next lecture, we're going to be discussing moment of inertia. And this is another cross sectional property because. Another way, another common way of expressing the bending stress, as we see in the top part there in our, in our heading line, it says introduction to bending stress in the elastic range, m over sx equals mc over i. Now, mc over i is another way of describing or expressing stress 
bending stress in the elastic range. We're going to talk about what moment of inertia is, and then we're going to move into plastic section modulus, which describes stresses in the plastic range beyond the linear range of elastic relationship between stress and strain. So I would like to thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your time to listen to this session of Prometheus University. If you found this at all useful, I would like you to share this with your friends and subscribe to the YouTube page and keep your eye out for the next part in the series, which will be discussing moment of inertia and relating moment divided by section modulus to MC over I. Thank you very much.